Hi, I'm Harold Jackson. I'm the editorial page editor at the Philadelphia Inquirer, and this afternoon we're here with Katie McGinty, the Democratic nominee for the U.S. Senate facing the incumbent Pat Toomey. Thank you, Kay, for being here this afternoon. Thanks for having me. I'll ask you a couple of questions. This is an election where the public is very much suspicious of government. We find a lot of that in the presidential race. And you're a person who's had jobs in government and outside of government, but with firms that were connected through contracts to them. And you've been criticized for that. How did you respond to that? Well, listen, I'm proud of the work I've done and been able to do in the private sector and the public sector. And I've always been about one thing. That is creating jobs, while protecting the environment. And I drive a pretty tough agenda of change. And I'm proud that when I was Secretary of Environmental Protection, we went from nowhere to one of the leading states in the country in renewable energy. And I'm proud in the private sector that I have helped companies that want to be part of a sustainable future. And some of those companies going from laggards to real leaders and others already leaders that I was proud to help strengthen. There have been suggestions that you use your positions in government to get jobs outside of it that have earned you millions of dollars. How do you respond to that? Well, you know, fact checkers have checked all of that and found it all to be false and misleading, and I've never, ever done that. I'm pretty particular about the work that I do. I've never lobbied. I don't carry people's water. I'm a change agent, and I have some values that I care about a lot, and that is I think we need to preserve and protect this planet but we need to do it while we're also creating good family sustaining jobs. That's what I've done and consistently, either in public service or in the good companies or the nonprofits that I have worked with in my career. And I think it's critically important experience too, because I think as you were suggesting, people are tired of just the problems, the problems, and they want people with experience and know how to jump in there and solve problems, get something done. And that's what I've done in my life and career, and as a senator, I'd be pleased and proud to do, to move an agenda forward. You stress in your campaign that the family life that you had growing up, the uh, child of, of a police officer, a large family, which is something that should resonate in this campaign with those people who feel disaffected or feel that they're outside of uh, Washington politics. Maybe it doesn't seem to be catching on when we have a uh, Donald Trump who seems to be getting that vote. Why do you think that's so? Well, I think that Donald Trump tapped into something that's very real out there. People are right to feel that they're getting the short end of the stick and getting kind of mad about it. You know, the politics isn't working for the average person. The economy's not been working for the average person. You know, what I see in every corner of this Commonwealth is people are giving it their all. They are putting in their 40 hours and then some. But their wages haven't kept up while costs have gone through the roof. And for me, what we need to do is to make the basic deal of America true again. You don't get a handout, no handouts. But you get a chance to take care of yourself and your kids if you're willing to put in the effort. And as you know, that's why I'm pushing things like job training and apprenticeship programs, bringing down the cost of college, and putting people back to work and rebuilding our infrastructure and competing again in clean advanced manufacturing. Let's get going. People aren't looking for special favors, but for goodness sakes, they need to be paid a decent wage so they can put food on the table, roof over their heads, and tell their kids, if you got a dream, I got you. In this time where people who are afraid that their wages are too low and their expenses are too high, there's a lot of criticism of these trade deals that they feel like are costing them jobs. What's your uh, thoughts on uh, the TPP or trade in general for the United States? Well, I think we need to have a level playing field, and I've opposed the TPP because even those who support it say that it will cost us 50,000 jobs a year, and I don't think we can afford that. You know, look, I want to put time, effort, and energy, and those things we know do provide good family-sustaining jobs. How about spending our time and effort in Washington, building a bipartisan coalition about rebuilding our roads, rebuilding our bridges? You know, that's the kind of thing that I think would drive our economy forward, bring back industry, enhance our productivity, and get us growing again. Now, the Senate is the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, out of Congress, where foreign policy is formulated. That's something that would be different for you. But what are your thoughts on some of the foreign policy issues for us in the nation, in particular Syria and its relationship to Russia? Mm. Well, I think um, you know our top priority 
uh, in my mind, is taking on defeating and destroying ISIS. And Syria is one significant piece of that equation, obviously. And I do think we need to press ahead with our airstrikes in support of local troops taking back uh, that turf that has been part of the caliphate. That's critically important. But it's not enough. You know, I think we have to get even more aggressive in cutting off the financial lifeblood of ISIS. Uh, and we need to take them on in cyberspace where they have been radicalizing these lone wolf terrorists. Russia has been a destabilizing force, uh, certainly with respect to Syria and, and elsewhere. And I think we need to meet Russia with what Russia uh, appreciates, and maybe the only thing Russia appreciates, and that's strength. And so I would push hard to maintain and strengthen the sanctions that are in place with respect to Russia right now on Ukraine and Crimea. And I think we should think strategically about uh, the bullying we see from Russia with respect to their energy assets, you know, holding our allies in Europe hostage and threatening to cut off energy. Uh, we have energy assets, and I'd like to think strategically about how we might put them to work, frankly, to keep Russia knowing that we mean business and we, we can meet strength with strength. Lastly, I want to ask you about your particular race being probably the most expensive U.S. Senate race in history, mm. certainly one of the most expensive. And, you know, what's your thoughts on that, you know, the fact that we have a campaign finance laws that allow this to happen? Yeah, well, uh, I'm proud to be endorsed by an organization called End Citizens United. It is the leading organization saying we need to overturn this court decision uh, that has just unleashed these torrents uh, of money into into politics. You know, I think our democracy is drowning now in these secret organizations and dark money and secret checks that are coming into our politics. Uh, but there's steps we can take. Legislation was proposed. It's a big difference between myself and Senator Toomey. I'd be a yes vote to overturn Citizens United to bring transparency and democracy back. Uh, and the senator voted against that. But I'd go further, too. Uh, you know, we've seen an evisceration of the Voting Rights Act. I think we need to have the Voting Rights Act back in full force. And I think we need to take steps to make it easier for people to vote, to enable early voting, to enable same-day registration to vote. Uh, key things that enable people to be full participants in their democracy. We've been talking to Kate McGinty, the Democratic candidate for U.S. Senate in Pennsylvania. Thank you very much for talking to Philly.com. Thanks for the opportunity.